now after the last speaker who showed some really dancing skills, I assume the expectations from each speaker goes up and up and up, but let's see if I can meet the expectations today. It's a pleasure to be in my home city where I was born 40 years ago, and it's a great pleasure to address such a great audience. And when I look at this audience, I see one thing, potential. I see tomorrow's enterprises. I see the tomorrow's Googles, the Facebooks, the Twitters. And all it needs is courage. And as all the other speakers before me have spoken, think big, start small, but have a passion. And follow your passion. And even though statistics say 10% of the startups succeed, I'm sure you will be one of those 10%. So you might be questioning, what does IBM have to do in a startup event? And you might also be asking, what does an IBM executive to do with his genes on the stage? So here is the answer. So this is the new IBM. We don't do hard drives anymore. We don't do laptops. We don't even do Intel servers anymore. It was 11 years ago, and I was sitting in our Istanbul office, and a flash came out. It said IBM is selling its PC business to Lenovo. And that was some news at that time. The company who invented the PC decided to go out of the PC business. And what are we doing now? You have seen what we are doing now. We are doing tremendously different things. So what is IBM today is essentially, we are a cognitive solutions company with an industry approach running on cloud. So this is what IBM is today. No more hard drives, no more laptops, no more PCs. So, looking at the recent article on, uh, on Forbes, as I mentioned, only 10% of the startups survive. And what does it take to survive is actually be innovative. Have a passion, have a vision, and you need to be disruptive. All the enterprises that we do business today, when we meet them day after day, they are afraid of one thing. And the one thing that they are afraid is somebody will come with a disruptive idea and they are going to kill their business. This is what happened to blockbusters. Netflix came in with an innovative idea on the cloud, on demand, and it killed the entire movie industry. Nobody goes to stores and rents any videos anymore. Blockbusters is dead. Kodak is dead. Why? They could not come up with the technology, even though they were the leaders in the digital imaging, they are no longer alive. So, be the disruptors, go out, 
and make a change. Disrupt people out of their comfort zones. You've seen a lot of examples like the Ubers and you know, the way they are changing the, the online, the, the, the blockchain, which is gonna change the entire financing industry in the next couple of years, which by the way, it has started changing uh, even, uh, even today. So this is Simon. If you, Wheatcroft, Simon is legally blind. Actually, he started losing his vision at the age of 17. But he had a passion, he wanted to run. And he started training at the age of 25, eight years after he became legally blind. And in six months, he was getting ready for his first 100 mile marathon, 100 miles. So how could he make it happen? First, he started practicing on a football pitch. So he was running back and forth, back and forth, memorizing the, the, the distance he has traveled. Of course, that wasn't enough. It could not allow him to run outdoors where there were cars, where there were you know, dogs and disruptions. So then he started practicing outside. Obviously, you know, a lot of accidents, you know, him hitting to the walls, to the street signs and so forth. Then came the application RunKeeper. I'm sure a couple of you must be using the, the application, uh, which is running on cloud using IBM database as a service cloud. And so with the help of RunKeeper, Simon started practicing running outdoors and with the distance that it was you know, uh, giving him on a, on a voice uh, and uh, by, by learning the, the tracks he was doing, by memorizing the, his running patterns and so forth, RunKeeper was able to guide him and giving him all the geo, ge, geospatial uh, information where there was hills and downhills and so forth. Simon started to run. He made his three mile, his fifth mile, then his tenth mile. And what he was doing is uh, every checkpoint, you know, he was touching whether the wall was uh, you know, finished or whether the payment was ending and so forth. So he actually made 80 miles outdoors, 80 miles legally blind running with the help of an application that is running on cloud. So this is innovation. What else? Some three interesting applications. One is I style myself. You can download it from the uh, Apple Store, by the way. So you give your wardrobe to this cool application, and then it starts recommending you outfits. You know, it recommends you, you know, jackets, what to wear with your jeans, with your uh, shirts, with your ties, with your shoes, and so forth. You swipe to the right if you like it. You swipe to the left if, if you didn't like it. The way you train it, it learns. Then it gives you more and more meaningful uh, recommendations. So it understands your dressing style. And then it starts giving you, you know, recommendations based on what you think is gonna be cool depending on, on events. So Electro Couture is a, is a startup in, in, in Berlin, uh, in Germany. And uh, they, one of their recent innovations was coming up with an IoT device uh, that came with a, uh, with a, a Couture uh, with, uh, with, a, with a jewelry. And Dapro uh, is a B2B2C uh, platform uh, which helps you choose your outfit uh, based on the event uh, that you are potentially to, uh, to attend. So this is an interesting one. Um, for those of you who are investing in the stock market, uh, which, is, which is pretty complicated, investing in cows is a little bit, uh, is a little bit uh, more simpler. So if you are looking for an investment, what you can go is go to the website or using uh, the web uh, for the Livestock Wealth. It's a company in South Africa, just outside of Johannesburg, which helps you to invest in a cow that is three months pregnant. And what you do is the cow, and they have, like humans, they have an approximately nine month uh, pregnancy period. So approximately after one year that you invest in the cow, you know, it has already given birth to a, to a young, uh, Co uh, that is ready to sell in the stock market. And it's a weighing approximately 220 kilograms, and with the current uh, prices in the market, that can bring you 16 to 20% of, uh, of return. A very innovative idea, which if you don't know where to invest, you can simply invest in a co People will continue eat meat and so forth, and uh, more and more it's becoming organic and even uh, more, uh, more uh, profitable. Does it have its risks? Obviously, like in the stock market, your offspring uh, you know, might 
might die, there might be complications uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the birth and so forth. But if you are looking for a you know, 16, 20% investment, this is an alternative idea, a startup that came up uh, with, this, with this idea. So, first one is one of my uh, favorites. Uh, it's, it's one of the uh, partnerships IBM made with SoftBank. SoftBank is a large uh, corporation in, uh, in Japan, and uh, actually it is the third largest public company in Japan uh, behind Toyota and Mitsubishi. So they do banking, they do telecommunications, they do robotics. And they came up with this cool robot uh, called uh, Pepper. So Pepper is connected to IBM uh, Bluemix, uh, and it is using some of the uh, APIs uh, that is uh, coming, uh, coming uh, through this uh, platform. So what it does is, when you speak to the robot, to, to Pepper, not only it understands your voice, which is simple voice recognition today, but it looks at your face and it you know, correlates your face, it correlates your voice, the tone of your voice, and what you are telling. So it becomes a more meaningful human interaction. So it understands whether you are angry. It understands whether what you demand, you are coming out of a frustration, or if you are simply a happy employee. So SoftBank is now uh, getting ready to open some stores uh, in Japan that will be entirely, almost entirely, uh, running uh, on, on the robots. The second one is a Cognitoy. So um, it's a toy connected to the internet, again, behind the scenes uh, connecting to, uh, to IBM Watson, uh, which, uh, which was the uh, award-winning uh, uh, Jeopardy winner. Uh, so your toy can start talking uh, to this toy, you know, asking questions asking very, very complicated questions, asking math problems, asking you know, um, jokes and so forth. And the Cognitoy will be able to connect, collect the information, and start communicating uh, with your kid. And the more they interact, the more it's going to learn. So that's what makes cognitive different than artificial intelligence in simple words. It is learning. It is learning by your habits. So it is going to adapt to your uh, level of uh, interaction. And the third one is actually should be very uh, similar to, to all of you. I was very young when the first Star Wars came out. I was one year old. Uh, but I remember very well The Empire Strikes Back, uh, The Return of the Jedi. That was early 1980s. Uh, some of you may not be born at that time, but those were very, very you know, hit uh, movies uh, at that time. Uh, it came with R2-D2, you know, a, a droid uh, that became very, very famous, which still exists, by the way. And most recently, they came up with this new droid, which is BB-8. So what IBM developers did um, in, in the labs is with the use of this headset, which is analyzing your brain emotions and connecting this headset through an IoT device that is talking to a BB-8 device, you start pushing, pulling, and you, you start moving a droid using your thinking. So I'm going to try if my training over the last 24 hours is going to help me achieve that. But um, it, is, it is one of the cool things that is coming with an IoT technology. So can I have the BB-8 on the stage, please? I need more practicing. Yesterday, I tried two comments. One was push, one was pull. What it does is, when I do a push command, it senses what I'm doing. And I was trying to be creative. I was assuming I was skiing, or I was actually, one time I was practicing, assuming I was in a supermarket pushing a cart. And I was doing the same, trying to pull the cart. 
As you see, pushing is a lot more easier than to pull and, and uh, to make it sideways. But in 24 hours, when I was practicing yesterday, what I could achieve was sending my mental emotions to an IoT device that would talk to the BB-8, which would make it move. So this is where we are going. This is the power of IoT. This is the power of connected uh, devices. And this is uh, how the next generation of uh, startups uh, will be making a huge uh, impact. So again, this is running on an IBM platform called Bluemix, and, um, which for the startups, by the way, uh, you can have a, a free uh, access uh, to Bluemix uh, up to a certain uh, usage, uh, and um, that will help you get uh, accustomed uh, to the platform. The key thing with the startups is scalability. You start small, you have a big vision, but at the end, your ultimate goal is to grow, to be, to be the next WhatsApp, to be the next Facebook, to be the next Google. So WhatsApp started very small. It's, it was running on an IBM cloud. It is still running on IBM cloud, by the way. So for those of you who are using WhatsApp, you are communicating through, through, an, uh, through a cloud platform. So today, it is running 42 billion messages, 1.6 billion images, and 200 and media every single day. Imagine the scale WhatsApp is running today, and imagine how they were when they started up, a very, very small company that could scale easily, anytime, on demand. So um, we have a program, IBM Global Entrepreneur Program, and this is a, a company uh, called Butler. Uh, we met them a few months ago in Dubai, and what they do is they created a platform that is connected to several commerce platforms. So it is your wife's birthday and you want to take her to a nice restaurant. So you go to Butler and say, this is my wife's uh, birthday. I would like to take her to a nice restaurant. And by the way, she likes French food. So it will go and come back to you with recommendations on the, on the oh, by the way, this new restaurant opened across the, the street and it has a TripAdvisor rating of 4.8. Sounds interesting. Why don't you make a reservation? So it will go to another e-commerce platform to make the reservation. Fine. I want to go to a nice beach resort. What are the alternatives? I don't want to fly more than eight hours. So it is going to come up with recommendations where you can fly in less than eight hours and say, by the way, this new island, you know, they have a new resort. And here are the, uh, the, the flights available that is going to take you there. One with, you know, direct flight, two without, uh, you know, with connections. And the cost is X hundred uh, dollars. Why don't you go ahead and uh, book it for me and use my credit card Amex? So the platform is going to communicate through several e-commerce platforms to get you what you need. It's, think of it as an online concierge, if you may. So they were here in Istanbul a few months ago um, in, uh, in one of the um, uh, startup events as well. So you can stop by the booth and uh, have an understanding of uh, what is the IBM Global Entrepreneur will be. So going back to the basics, think big, start small, build bigger and better business, and use cloud as the next uh, wave of innovation for your, uh, for your startup. Thank you very much. And if you want to hear more about the BBH story, feel free to visit the booth. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.